Hi, my name is Brian Mars and I'm the fishing manager of Orvis Portland. We're going to be starting a monthly forecast for top fishing picks and this is going to be the first one of the edition, but every month we're going to have this. This is the uh, February top picks. First off, we're in Portland. I would say we're in a steelhead mecca. Um, this year I've been steelhead fishing quite a bit at the coast and it's been cranking. Um, we've also had reports of the inland fisheries like the Sandy and Clackamas. They've both been fishing really well. The uh, people fishing the Sandy are consistently getting fish on swung flies. So first off, I wanted to just go in. We've been fishing large articulated intruder style flies and tube flies for steelhead, doing really extremely well. For those who like to dead drift the uh, egg patterns under a strike indicator, or if you don't have enough artillery to throw the skagit head systems, you can dead drift with a floating line and trout beads and you can hang them under a strike indicator. Basically you would fish a fluorocarbon leader, 16 pound, and then you can run your uh, tippet off at 16 pound, and if you were rubbing, uh, running double flies, you can run your second flight at 12. That way if you hit bottom a piece of wood or something and you break off, you theoretically will lose one fly. Also this uh, tungsten putty, which is pliable, excellent stuff to get down. So basically the coast, uh, some rivers starting like say from the central coast, Sayusla, Lake Creek, our guide down there has been having stellar fishing reports, Alsea really good, Solettes, Nestucca a little further up, excellent fishing reports. The uh, Wilson, Nehalem, Norfolk, Nehalem, Trask, all fishing really well. People coming in are having multiple fish days that are nymph fishing, the guys swinging are actually hooking one to two to three fish a day, the guys that know what they're doing. So excellent fishing. For those of you who aren't into catching the big chromers, we have some good trout fishing possibilities finally starting up now. February is about the beginning of our fishing time for trout. We have a little box made up that we'll go over with our flies for the upper middle fork of the Lamet. Same big industrial lamet that flows through the Portland metro area. About an hour and 45 minutes up is a nice mountain stream that this time you get a solid blue winged olive hatch and also we get a, uh, a midge hatch that'll kind of come off. It's a little bit unnoticed. The other thing is nymphing with big attractors, really good. The uh, third bet we'll go talk about as well is Crooked River, small sparkly nymphs and little attractor bugs, blue winged olives and uh, midges really going to be productive on the crooked this month coming up. So if you guys are looking to get out, those are three prospective fisheries, whether you have coastal steelhead, inland steelhead, or crooked river for the other side of the Cascades, or the South Valley toward the Mackenzie Willamette. So here we're going to give you a little close-up of our flies to fish for the upper middle fork of the Willamette. Also, the same flies would be quite applicable to the uh, Mackenzie River if that happens to be flowing in shape right now. You definitely want to be looking at your river levels this time of the year. So first off, you get a pretty reliable blue-winged olive hatch on the upper middle fork of the Willamette. We have our Sparkle done. We got our CDC Compare done. We also have our um, emerging blue-winged olive. Then right here we have what's a really excellent fly called a Hickey's Glass Bead Emerger, blue-winged olive. Then right here we have a sort of a tractor style fly that we call the Holy Grail. Then we have here Mercer's Micro May. Really excellent choices for the subsurface over there. Now we're going to move on up. Over here we have the fast water tungsten head jig prints tied on a tactical hook. Super excellent hook, really pointy. Right here we have the Fair's Candy Caddis. And here we also have a tactical hook Rickophilia. We get a really good green caddis hatch in a few weeks from now, so the uh, fish will get keyed on of these. They'll be crawling around the rocks. You'll get a uh, golden stone or a squala, so a restless stone, or other people know this fly as a jimmy legs, will really cover well for this. You'll cover both the squala stone nymph and your golden stone nymph. Then tried and true posse bugger. I would just say hands down one of the best attractor nymphs on the upper middle fork or the McKenzie system. Then going into the smaller bugs, zebra midge, very overlooked, but very effective. Small, just standard beadhead American pheasant tail, excellent fly. Then right here we have the, uh, um, this is the, uh, Lexi's hollow prince. Oh yeah, Lexi's hollow prince, which is basically like a zebra midge with a little emerging tuft on it. 
Then here we have the mi um, micro tube midge in black. Super excellent choice. Now we're basically going to dive into our steelhead subsurface dead drift bead fishing. So some really super productive colors. We have our natural row. We have our charisse. Then we have our um, basically a uh, dark row, which would imitate the row after it's been in the water for quite a bit of time. These are super excellent proven killers. I would say if you just fish with these beads only, you will catch plenty of fish. Now we wonder how we're going to get these things down. Tungsten putty. You basically rub this stuff around in your fingers for a little bit. It becomes pliable. You mold it onto um, a uh, blood or a surgeon's knot about 14, 16 inches up from your bead. And then basically once you dunk it in the water, it'll cool down and lock itself in place. Really dense, gets your fly down. Okay. Now I'm going to briefly talk about our flies for swinging. So I would say just, you know, a lot of this is theory, but we're going to basically break it down in the situational. If you have really low clear water, or if you have a rod that's going to limit the flies you can throw, where you're only limited to smaller flies that will sink really fast, we have this little tube fly, the Sylvie's, uh, Sylvie's, Sylvanator. <laughs> the Sylvanator, apologize. Then we also right here have a fly that's, I would say, just in the opposite end, a high water fly. We call this a gigolo. You can see it actually has a jig hook. It'll ride basically like this. This fly can even be run under an indicator. Take those high flows again, and right. maybe you want something that would be really noticeable. We have what we call the cold medicine. This fly has got really excellent action, very noticeable. We have actually had really stellar reports of people fishing them. For those of you who like tubes, I really love this fly, the Hartwick Hoser. Black and blue, very proven colors. I've been doing really well with this exact fly lately. Then a lighter weight fly, if your fly is getting down too fast and you need a little less weight, we have Hickman's Fish Taco. Really lively fly in the water with those ostrich plumes. And then this fly, we've really been just selling the daylights out of it the last years. People come in and buy them saying how well they work. It's called the Sylvie's Extractor. Really good. We carry this in all sorts of proven steelhead colors. Black and blue, orange, reds, pinks. So, so whatever you guys want to know, just come in. We can fill you in on some more details if you guys want to go hit the water.